Okay, we're now into our 11th session in Demystifying Revelation, and we're going to start off in Revelation 6, looking at the sixth seal that is broken by the Lamb of God. So, let's go to the passage, Revelation 6, verse 12. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come. And who can stand? So this begins the sign of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and let me just emphasize, it begins the sign. There's a lot to unpack here, so um, let's get with it. We'll look first at the earthquake. Verse 12, when he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Not just an earthquake, a great earthquake. And there's already been a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament that has warned of a great earthquake in the day of the Lord. So let's look at some of them. Ezekiel 38, verse 19. Now, if you recall, when we went through Ezekiel 38, 39, this is Gog of Magog, or uh, the prophecy against the Antichrist. Uh, For in my jealousy, and this is the Lord speaking, for in my jealousy and in my blazing wrath I declare on that day, and we know what that means, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. So already we're telling, we're being told on that day there's a great earthquake in Israel. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 18, in the day of his fierce anger. Another way of saying on that day, the earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. Now, whether this is the sixth seal or the sixth bowl, we do not know. But what we do know is that on that day of his fierce anger, there will be a massive earthquake. And then with earthquakes, there can also be tsunamis. Now, why do I bring this up? Because of the words of Jesus, where he says in Luke 21, 25, and there will be signs in heaven. Correction. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars. And on the earth, distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, which gives a pretty strong indication that there's a tsunami involved with the earthquake. So let's go from earthquake now to sun, moon, and stars, the cosmic events, where it says, And the sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. Now, just like earthquake, the sun and the moon and the stars, these landmark cosmic events that announce the coming of the Lord is well documented in Old Testament prophecy. So let's look at some of them. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 9, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. 
from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 32, verse 7. When I blot you out, that saith the Lord, I will cover the heavens and make their stars dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give its light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over you, and put darkness on your land, declares the Lord God. So it's talking about not only the sun and moon and stars being uh, uh, snuffed out of their light, but he is going to put darkness on your land, which we have seen in past in Exodus. Joel chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 31. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he says later on in chapter 3, verse 15, the sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining. Now let's look what Jesus had to say. Uh, and so I'm looking at the Matthew and Mark passages of the Olivet Discourse. And we'll look at a little more than the sun and moon and stars. One thing <coughs> is that while Revelation will expand out these events, so many of the prophecies in the Old Testament and by Jesus takes all these events and they're compact into shorter verses. Uh, but these are also quite revealing, the Matthew 24, 29 account. Immediately after the tribulation. So what comes first? The tribulation. What came first? The first, second, third, fourth, and fifth seal, which was all about the tribulation, the great tribulation. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. This is a very interesting uh, phrase, especially when we consider what Paul said, that we don't war against the rulers and authority. Well, no, we war against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. They will be shaken. Verse 30, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And that's what the sixth seal is all about. The sign on clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. And this speaks of the uh, resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the saints that are still left um, standing on the ground. Mark 13 account. Verse 24, but in those days, once again, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give his light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven, once again, the exact same words, will be shaken. And then, then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. So when is then? When do we see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory? Well, in Revelation speak, that's Revelation chapter 19. And also then he will send out the angels with the resurrection of the dead and the rapture. Okay, let's read on. <clears throat> Verse 14, Revelation 6. The sky vanished like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Wow. This is not anything trivial. So what do we have from Old Testament prophecies? Let's go first to Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 4, where he says, All the host of heaven shall rot away, and the skies roll up like a, scroll, like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall as leaves fall from the vine, like leaves falling from the fig tree. There's just so much here that if we were to unpack it, we would spend probably the rest of the session. 
Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 3. His splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like a light, rays flash from his hand, and there he veiled his power. Before him went pestilence, and plague followed at his heels. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low, and his were the everlasting ways. Verse 10, the mountains saw you and, and writhed. The raging waters swept on. The deep gave forth its voice. It lifted its hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their place and at the light of your arrows as they sped, at the flash of your glittering spear, you march through the earth in fury. You thresh the nations in anger. You went out for the, for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed, which we talked about in Jacob's trouble. You crushed the head of the house of the wicked, laying him bare from thigh to neck, which is the Genesis 3.15 prophecy, where the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. So much here. But in the context of the sixth seal, uh, we see that in this passage as well. Now let's look at New Testament from the Apostle Peter. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And once again, just like the other prophets, uh, the, the, the Apostle Peter acting as a prophet here has taken a lot of the events and it's just packed them into a few short verses. Chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So not only is there a prophecy here, but there's a very key and strong pastoral message from Peter. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming day of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So in one sense here, Peter went uh, all the way from Revelation chapter 6 to Revelation chapter 22 with the new heaven and earth, just in a few short verses. Now the question that I think is worth asking, has there been a precedent like this in history past? Well, let's look at two. One is Jesus' own crucifixion. In the Matthew account, chapter 27, verse 45, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So for about, what, three hours. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. And later, verse 51, Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were open. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And then just like that, they were gone. Verse 54, when the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, that being the darkness, they were filled with awe and said, truly this was the Son of God. 
So in one sense, Jesus' uh, crucifixion is a type and a foreshadow of what we're yet to see in Revelation. But there's a very, there, there's a much older type and foreshadowing that is very, very important to its relevance and its parallels in Revelation. And that's what happened uh, in Exodus when uh, the children of Israel uh, fled from uh, from uh, Egypt under, under Pharaoh, under the power and leadership of God. And in this precedent, there was also a very important principle, an extremely important principle that was not just put there uh, just haphazardly in Scripture. It's there for a reason and a purpose, and that's the Goshen principle. And as we had discussed earlier, uh, when we reviewed Exodus uh, and the Goshen principle, there were several occurrences that, um, that were God was rendering judgment and plagues and pestilence against Egypt. What was happening where the Hebrews lived in the land of Goshen? Just another day as normal. Well, what about darkness? Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. Then the Lord Yahweh said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. And no one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Total darkness. Darkness that you could not even see your hand in front of your face unless you had a lamp. Yet all the Israelites over in Goshen, they had light in the places where they lived. So not only is there precedent set on these events, but there's also very important precedent set by God's protection over his, over his people as he unleashes judgment against Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Very, very important. Okay, we're still in the sixth seal, so let's read on. Verse 15. Then, when's then? After we've had the earthquake, the sun, moon, and stars go dark. Uh, after the sky is scrolling up. Then, the kings of the earth, and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come. And who can stand? So this is the sign in heaven. And, and as we see, uh, the enemies of Christ are now going into hiding. They're not seeing Christ coming down from the sky yet, but they see the face of him seated on the throne, and, and they want to hide from him. Do we have these warnings in, in the Old Testament prophets? Of course. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from before the terror of the Lord, Yahweh, and from the splendor of his majesty, which was, could be seen from earth. Verse 19, and people shall enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth to enter the caverns of the rocks and the cliffs and uh, of the cliffs from the terror of Yahweh the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth from the prophet Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 27 for thus says the Lord Yahweh quote the whole land shall be a desolation Yet I will not make a full end. For this, is the, for this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above shall be dark. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, 
nor will I turn back. At the noise of the horseman and archer, every city takes to flight. They enter the thickets. They climb among the rocks. All the cities are forsaken, and no man dwells in them. Zephaniah captures a lot of the sixth seal in some very interesting uh, prophecy. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord, the day of Yahweh, is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like what we saw in Egypt. Verse 16, a day of the trumpet blasts and a battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring disaster on mankind so that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against Yahweh the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of Yahweh the Lord. In the fire of his jealousy and all of the earth shall be consumed for a day, correction, for a full and sudden end will he make of all the inhabitants of the earth. A lot there in just a few short verses. So, when we see all this going on and everybody going, the kings of the earth and great ones, etc., etc., going into hiding, saying, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who's seated on the throne and you know, from the, the Lamb of God. Well, that is, in one sense, that is the reaction of the wicked because there's going to be two general responses. From the wicked, there's going to be either fear and hiding from the wrath of God in judgment of their evil deeds. They've known that they have gone against the God of all creation. Or there will be those on earth that are have been facing the tribulation, that have been facing the wrath of Satan uh, and the Antichrist and the false prophet. They're going to cry out to God for his vengeance and deliverance because knowing what they know in the scripture, they know their day is also coming. In Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on earth, distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and waves, people fainting with fear and the foreboding of what is coming, what is coming hadn't come yet on the world for the powers of the heaven will be shaken and then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to take place straighten up raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near and that will be the reaction of the saints so instead of terror and fear, it will be joy because the almighty God is now coming to rescue them. And so that's all we're going to talk about on the sixth seal. Uh, we're now going to go into chapter seven, but we will do that in part two of this video.